Well, Chris Geary certainly deserved all the plaudits he got for his outstanding drive in guiding artillery to success here last week in the open class event. But the eye-catching performance of the race, as far as I was concerned, belongs to Mahomes, coming from back in the field, charging home to grab third spot. I'm joined now by his trainer driver, Jack Trainer, and of course with the Eureka just around the corner. Mahomes is certainly in there with a very big chance. Well, Jack, I would go without saying the performance of Mahomes last week was simply superb. Yeah, that's right, Nick. He obviously um, got great record as a three-year-old and uh, raced his last race in the Chariots of Fire as a four-year-old on a wet night. And uh, yeah, he had a month break after that. And obviously that's when I got him after that spell and he come back really well. And obviously he had sort of thrown him in the deep end of it against the first time against proper free-for-all company on Saturday. But I couldn't be more pleased with him. Um, he had a great run, but he showed that he's going to be able to follow the speed and he's come back even stronger again. Yeah, that's the thing, Jack. He's been known as a bit of a bully in some of his races, either leading or being able to sit outside of him. But following the tempo against the better class horses, a big plus. Yeah, that's right. Like, obviously, going through his grades on his way up, he was able to sort of use his gate speed and lead and, and as you said, bully his way to a few wins. But now that he's up against the big boys, we have to rely on his speed now, and which has always been his best asset, even from right from a two-year-old. Uh, he has just strengthened up every time he's come back and... Uh, yeah, it looks like he's going to be a really nice horse moving forward. Jack, he must be a chance of gaining some attention as far as the Eureka is concerned. He is a foolproof horse, races well here, he ticks a lot of boxes. Yeah, that's right. It's obviously, um, it probably is an aim, and I know that the owners are keen, so it's just a matter of what slots are left and if he's the sort of horse that people are interested in. But, yeah, he's definitely um, going the right way about making a case, and he's just one of those horses that, as he showed on Saturday night, he can camp off any sort of speed and... He is probably best suited to this track too. So obviously we did think about maybe taking him to Queensland, but after his run on Saturday night, I think we're just going to leave him here and um, obviously just try and keep around the free-for-alls. I think Menangle is really his place to be. And he is a fan favourite, so he would gain a lot of attention as far as a spot in Eureka with his owners so devoted to Mahomes as far as the NFL star for the Kansas City Chiefs. And no doubt, you never know, the Kansas City Chiefs may pick up on it as well. Yeah, that's right. Um, there's definitely there's no lack of enthusiasm in the camp, that's for sure. Um, obviously, the boys that own them are all a bunch of family, and um, yeah, they get their kids and all their family here in the Mahomes jerseys, as we've touched on before. And yeah, they're, they're definitely a passionate bunch. So, for something like that, if it was um, if they were able to gain a spot, I'm sure they'd make the most of it. And probably, regardless, they're going to have a hell of a time with him. Yeah, Mahomes is not the only horse from your stable now being aimed at the Eureka. In fact, there's already a lot of attention heading towards Naturally Gifted. Yeah, that's right, Mick. Um, obviously, I've just got this horse, um, an American owner named Richard Pellucci, who's owned many good horses over in America um, over the years. He has bought him, and uh, there has been some talk, just small talk amongst the camps, about a potential slot for him. Being a three-year-old, obviously, uh, depending on how many other three-year-olds get in the race, um, it sort of guarantees you a pretty good draw. And his couple of runs in the in the Derby heat, the Derby, and probably then again in Bathurst too, show that he can stay a lot. And, yeah, I think from what I've been told, he's on the top of a certain slot holders list. And it's just a matter of we're just holding fire a bit. I'll probably either race him on Tuesday or trial him on the Wednesday uh, before I take him to Queensland for the Derbies, the Redcliffe Derby and the Queensland Derbies. But hopefully if he shows enough in his first couple of starts, they might lock him in and um, yeah, then we can start getting excited and taking aim. Well, there's certainly going to be an exciting build-up over the next three months, but you're already on cloud nine with the announcement of the Ambassador. Yeah, that's right. I've obviously um, heard the news today that Charles Oliveira is going to be the Ambassador. So, um, yeah, as a UFC fan, along with all of um, the mates, that, you know, a few of us drivers here, we're all pretty keen on it. So, yeah, it's going to be a big thrill and I'm sure it's a really good thing for someone to be able to do that because it's going to get a lot more eyes on this race than there already was going to be. It's going to draw a completely different crowd that have probably never seen uh, harness racing in Australia before. So it can only be good for um, our sport and obviously for the race. So yeah, it'll be exciting to get him over here and might even size him up while I'm there. <laughs> I'll uh, take odds about that one, Jack. Now let's have a look at the chances on Saturday night. You've got some exciting drives once again in the first Joe and Joe for your good mate Jason Grimson. Yeah, she just got back a little bit last start and um, the race wasn't really one run to suit. She was really wide, but her run before that was really good. And, uh, yeah, she's not without a hope, just drawing in the middle. Over to race two and number three, heaven on high, one of your better drives. And they had to turn his racing pattern around last time out. But it turned out to be sensational. 
Yeah, he did. He, he done really well to win there. Obviously, he was first up for a while without a trial, about a month. Uh, so, and there was a lot of speed to our inside. So we just selected to stay out of it. And it, as it turned out, it worked out to be the right thing to do. And he's always sort of shown that sort of speed. It's just and much like Mahomes, he's sort of running through his grades. He's been able to bully his way to the front a bit, but just shows he is a versatile horse. And um, yeah, he's got a nice handy draw up in the 95 grade. But yeah, he's definitely, definitely a winning chance. Yeah, David Thorne's doing a great job with this fella. And as you just mentioned, the versatility factor now comes into play, and that's going to be a big plus. Yeah, that's right. Thorny's done a great job with him coming from New Zealand. You know, he was a nice horse without being anything special when he got him. And he's turned him into a really nice horse. I expect him to go right through that 95 grade uh, pretty pretty easily and, and relatively quickly. So, yeah, and at that level, you do have to be versatile. It's, there's nothing worse if you have to be up on the speed all the time. It can really take the toll on the horse and being able to drive him for his speed will make him go a, lot, a hell of a lot longer. You've got Chevron Ike going well, and he will contest the JD watch, but he draws the outside gate and he's up against the field of stars. Yeah, that's right. It's the random draw. It's the only draw we didn't want. He's, um, yeah, I'm really happy with him. I, I changed a few things around at home over the last probably month, and it's just made all the difference with him. Um, finally got him back, showing some sort of form like he did uh, early in his four-year-old season, um, albeit it'd have to be even better than that to probably win from there. We just used it as a run get a guy out of where he's at, take shortcuts and look for something a bit more um, kind to us in the coming weeks. Mark Jones, Jack Trainer combination, back to the four, of course, stylish Memphis, all the wonderful success you enjoyed. And in race eight, the trot, you've got a hot the truck going around. Jack, eight stars from behind the tapes, all unplaced. Yeah, because he hasn't gone away yet, uh, Mick, so it's not very promising. Uh, uh, he's a really nice trotter. He's been sent over to me to take to Queensland for those bigger trot races. Um, we just have to use this Saturday as a stepping stone. He's just, just high enough grade not to be able to get in on a Tuesday. But he's also not very good from a standing start, if I'm being honest. So main thing, get him away and obviously just get him around in one piece. But yeah, when you see him back in a mobile, um, I'd stick with him. He's pretty nice trotter. To the last of Mayor's race, chock full of interest. BK Spy, eye-catching performance in finishing fast for a third behind Polly. Put the kettle on and... Brave View Kelly back from her Miracle Mile sojourn and trolling nicely. Yeah, we've got starting to fire up some of the better mares now, which is good. Um, I was wrapped with BK's first up run, Astro over Perfect. She hadn't had a race since the week before the Ladyship Mile in late February and she went without a trial, so she stripped fitter again and as we know, she's always just that little knockout hope, if not a place hope, just from how she's suited to this track. And uh, Kelly, I'm really happy with her as well. She's come back probably even better again, I think. Cam was full of praise after driving her on uh, Wednesday at the trials. He said she just went to the line hard, held in 26 quarter, and she seems to only be a bit fitter and a bit more full of herself ever since. So don't like my chances of getting my drive back there. But, um, yeah, I'd, ta I'd say she'd take a lot of stopping. Still a nice training fee. Now, Jack, leaving Stylish Memphis out of the equation, she was a headline act for you. This current crop that you now have under your care, it looks to be the strongest you've had? Yeah, I think so. Like, obviously, um, Stylish Memphis, probably her first season here, she was pretty unbelievable, really, racing those five weeks in a row and racing against the boys in Chariots of Fires. And you know, some of her sectional, individual sectionals were, you know, out of this world when she was at her absolute best at four. It's just really nice that because of the unfortunate retirement of Stylish Memphis. I'm just very lucky. I've had Brave View Kelly land straight on my lap, but she's definitely going the right way about being, um, you know, a, a top mare or known as a, you know, maybe even a champion mare. So she's getting more versatile. She's stronger. And, yeah, she just seems to be in a good place. So really looking forward to taking her to Queensland. What's the best for Saturday night, Jack? Oh, I think Brave View Kelly's got to be awfully hard to beat. I, I think it's only bad luck that beats her. Um, and probably heaven on high as a little knockout chance as well. Good luck for Saturday night and going forward as we head into the Eureka. Awesome. Thank you very much, mate.